subscribe now and press the bell icon. Never miss an update. Hello students. Our today's topic is anatomy of female reproductive system. It is obvious that some people find anatomy very difficult. So hearing about anatomy, you don't have to worry as we will discuss it in a very easy peasy way. So let's get started. Here we are discussing female reproductive system. When I'm saying system, you already know that a group of organs makes a system. So if female reproductive is a system, it means it will also have organs performing specific functions. Let's have a look at principal organs of this system. Starting from ovaries, why I am saying ovaries? Because a female body have two ovaries, right and left ovary. And you know that ovaries are female gonads and site of production of oocytes. Oocytes? What are oocytes? You don't have to worry. I will discuss oocytes when I will discuss physiology. So I was telling you that ovaries are female gonads and site of production of oocytes. Now moving on to the next organ that are fallopian tubes, you can also call them uterine tubes. And like ovaries, fallopian tubes, we also have two fallopian tubes, right and left. Fallopian tubes are very important in female reproductive system because the process of fertilization is taking place here. You already familiar with the fertilization process which is basically the fusion of sperm and ovum. After fallopian tube the next organ is uterus which is a hollow muscular organ. Why it is muscular? Because we know that muscular means having muscle property of relaxation and contraction. So the answer that why it is muscular because uterus is not only serving the function of nurturing for baby but also at the time of birth this property of muscles is very important because of strong uterine contractions baby is made able to move towards vagina which is an other organ of the system and vagina is also a muscular like uterus because it pushes the baby out to this world it is also termed as birth canal or you can simply say that it is a door for baby to meet the outer world. Here is a diagram in which you can see clearly all the reproductive organs of female reproductive system. You can see that we have two ovaries with their respective fallopian tubes which opens into the uterus and finally ends up in vagina. Here is another very good diagram for understanding the female reproductive organs. If you focus, you can clearly see that a connection between uterus and ovary. This connection is basically a ligament which connects uterus to ovary and this ligament is called an ovarian ligament. Here comes ovaries. Each ovary consists of an outer covering of cuboidal epithelium, a dense connective tissue layer that is called tunica albuginea and cortex. Then comes ovarian ligament. I already told you about ovarian ligament that ovary is attached to the uterus by this ovarian ligament. You don't have to worry about this cuboidal epithelium, tunica, albuginea or cortex. It would be more clear with the help of diagram which I will show you later. We already discussed that cuboidal epithelium is the outermost layer of the ovary and if you have know-how of tissues then definitely you will also be familiar with epithelial tissues which serve as an outer covering and cuboidal is basically the subtype of epithelial tissues in which the shapes of cells are cube-like. After epithelium we have tunica albuginea which is also composed and other type of tissue these are called dense connective tissue and other type of tissues. At last cortex is followed by tunica albuginea which is also composed of a tissue framework called ovarian stroma. Ovarian stroma is very important. If you remember, I told you earlier that ovaries are the site of production of oocytes. So ovarian stroma is exactly where these oocytes are developing into ova with the help of surrounding cells which supports oocytes. Maturation process and when we group oocytes and surrounding cells, it is termed as an ovarian follicle. If you remember, I told you earlier that ovaries are the site of production of oocytes. So ovarian stroma is exactly where these oocytes are developing into ova 
with the help of surrounding cells which supports oocytes maturation process and when we grouped oocytes and surrounding cells, it is termed as an ovarian follicle. This diagram is clearly depicting the anatomy of an ovary. You can see cuboidal outer layer, then tunica albuginea. It is not labeled here, but now we know that it is beneath epithelium. So this was all about ovaries. Now, now moving ahead to fallopian tubes or uterine tube, you can see that it has three parts. Starting from finger-like projections, fimbriated ends, we have our fir very first part that is called infundibulum. Then fallopian tubes takes a curve and this part is called ampulla. And at last we have isthmus. Fallopian tube is made up of mucous membranes which have ciliated and secretory cells. Wait a minute. Why fallopian tube have ciliated cells? The answer is very obvious. I already told you that in fallopian tube the process of fertilization is taking place. Although all parts of fallopian tube are important, but the most important part of fallopian tube is infundibulum because can you see that the process of fertilization is taking place in infundibulum where the whole story begins. Fallopian tube is made up of mucous membrane which have ciliated and secretory cells. Wait a minute. Why fallopian tubes have ciliated cells? The answer is very obvious because these ciliated cells after fertilization helps zygote to move towards uterus. After fertilization, zygote moves to ampulla and started its mitotic divisions in isthmus and finally reaches uterus as blastocyst. As now blastocyst reached uterus, so let's start discussing uterus. As I already told you that Uterus is a thick-walled muscular organ capable of expansion to accommodate a growing fetus. It is connected distally to vagina and laterally to uterine tubes. Like fallopian tubes, uterus is also divided into three parts, which is fundus, the head of the uterus, then comes body of the uterus, and finally cervix, which is end or exit of the uterus. Fundus is situated above the entry point of uterine tube. Body of the uterus is basically the usual site for implantation of blastocyst. And cervix is the lower part of the vagina. Histologically speaking, it is composed of three tissue layers. The outermost layer of uterus is called perimetrium. Then comes myometrium in the middle, which is thick smooth muscle layer and helps in preparation female body to expel the fetus at the time of birth through its strong contractions. The innermost layer is endometrium, which is an inner mucous membrane lining the uterus. Let's move on to the last organ of female reproductive tract and that is vagina. We already know that it is a muscular canal with the property of elasticity, which makes it flexible to serve the purpose of lubrication and an exit door for the baby to the outside world. In this diagram, its histological layers are obvious. It also has three layers of tissues like uterus. Inner layer is made up of squamous epithelial tissues, another type of epithelial tissues, which makes lining of the vagina. Then beneath it, we have a layer of connective tissues and finally, outermost layer is a muscle layer which definitely is responsible for its flexibility and also helping vagina to expel the baby out of the mother's body. Finally, that is the complete picture of our discussion where you are able to understand the complete anatomy of female reproductive organs. So here we have ovaries and then we have fallopian tubes with the fimbriated ends, their three parts, infundibulum, ampulla and isthmus. Finally comes uterus with its again its three parts, fundus, the head of the uterus and cervix and at the end we have vagina. So that was all about anatomy of female reproductive system. If you like this video, please don't forget to subscribe.